right, so what I thought I would do is give you a more detailed video on the new overlock table. OK, so here it is. And I have posted quite a lot up about it on my group, Deb Canham Surge of Sanity Projects, and you still have loads of questions. So I'm going to try and answer them all in this video. So here is the table. And it looks similar to your knife table and your cover stitch table. But let me go through the slides because I think that's going to help you. And then I'm going to show you my setup when I'm using the fabric guide and flat lock stitch. So let's just go into the video, the um, slideshow because I think it just adds more information so you can see it. So let me just take that over there. There we go. So this is the new overlock table. It will only fit the Triumph and the Ovation. The baby lock surges, the Triumph and the Ovation. And um, what is it that makes it different? Well, if you look at the table, it's kind of a combination of the cover stitch table and the knife table. So if you look where the red arrow is pointing, it's designed to let you use serger stitches. See the cutaway where the upper looper is able to work. So you can use serger stitches on this table. The yellow arrow points to a cutout area where you can cut your fabric and it will feed through and fall onto your table or into your bin, whatever you have there. And the third arrow, the blue, two blue arrows, points to the fact that it has two sets of screws. And the reason for this is it's going to allow you to use some of your attachments that you use with cover and chain. while using serger stitches, I should have said. So you, you, it's basically a serger table that allows you to use some of the cover and chain attachments, which makes a big difference. So let's compare the knife table and the new overlock table. The knife table is on the left, the old one, and this is the new one. And you can use it when serging. Okay, so that's the idea of it. This new table allows you to use this table when using the serger stitches. It's also going to provide you with a larger work area. And it's going to allow you to use some of the cover stitch and chain attachments. So let's compare the cover stitch table and the overlock table. And you can see that the cover stitch table is a big flat table. Whereas the new overlock table has a cutout for cutting your fabric. It has a cutout for your overlock table, but it still has those screw holes that are on your cover stitch table. Okay, so it's a bit of both. So when are you going to use your cover stitch table? If you are not combining a serger stitch when you're using cover stitch, use just the cover stitch table. But if you choose to use a serger stitch and a cover and chain stitch, then you can use your new overlock table. So let's just say when we're going to use the new overlock table, because I think that will help some of you understand what it does exactly. So when you want to combine a chain stitch and an overlock stitch, you can use the new overlock table. When you want the best possible accurate measurement of a seam allowance using the fabric guide, you're going to use, and you're stitching with an overlock stitch, you're going to use the overlock table. And finally, when you are surging and you want a large work area, you again can use the new overlock table. For me, this table is a replacement for the knife table, okay? It's, 
I will probably use this more than the knife table, partly because I can use my fabric guide, but also because it has a larger space. But those are the two main reasons that I will probably use this table more than I'll ever use my knife table again. So there are many things you could do with this new table, um, and we'll go through some of them. But I think predominantly the greatest thing about this table is it is going to give you, allow you to use the fabric guide, which is going to allow you to sew a perfect quarter of an inch seam, three eighths of an inch seam, five eighths of an inch, inch seam, one inch seam, whatever you want, it's going to give you an accurate guide. And you know, when I'm teaching, the biggest question I have is if I say to somebody, oh, you know, it's a five eighths seam allowance, you know that if you're using a serge stitch, you will be cutting off some fabric. And people always worry about how much fabric they have to cut off. This is going to take the guesswork out of that. You can set it up so that you know exactly, and I will go on to show you that. So let's just talk about the fabric guide because the, um, let's see if I can move that picture, I can't. It's The code for it is BLES8 hyphen FG, okay? And I do give it at the end, so you can catch it at the end. So what you're going to do is you're going to attach your fabric guide to the overlock table using the black screw holes at the back. And then you're going to draw a line on your fabric. Say we're doing a 5 eighths of an inch seam. This is how I set it up. And I think it's easy. OK, so you're going to draw a line on a piece of fabric 5 eighths of an inch from the edge. So that tells you that's your 5 eighths seam. The line you have marked is your stitch line. OK. So you're going to place your fabric under the foot right up to the knife and you're going to line your drawn line on your fabric to your left needle. If you're only using the right needle, then to the right needle. And you're going to find that mark by looking at the notch on the front of your foot. And I'm going to take you through that in a minute. So you're going to stitch to get a perfect five eighths of an inch from the edge and it will cut off the required amount of fabric that needs to be cut off for your stitch line to be five eighths from the original raw edge. So I think that is probably the most exciting thing because so many people are looking for that accuracy. So let me go on and demo that. So, whoops, wrong one. Let me go on and demo that. I'll get there in a minute. Right, so here's my machine and I have it open. And the first thing I'm going to do is take my new overlock table, see how it has a gap for the fabric to go in, the upper looper mark, and there is a bump up here, okay? So what I'm going to do is just put it into my machine like I normally do. And it's one of those tables that slides over. Now, if you're one of those people that find that you move your table when you're stitching, like some of you do with the um, when the binders are attached, then you can always put a bit of tape across it. I don't. Mine always sits happily, so I'm going to leave it as it is. You will see a slight gap there because of the way it attaches to the machine. OK. So what I'm going to do is close up my machine. And I am actually set for a two thread overlock. And what I want to show you is how easy it is to find your seam guide, your stitch line. So the first thing I'm going to do is attach my large um, fabric guide. Now there are two fabric guides. There's this smaller one. It will work with this one, but not as well as it will work with this one. This one tends to overlap the edge a bit, and it's not as big. You can't do as much with it. So if you're going to invest in this table, I recommend you invest in this big fabric guide. And I'm going to use my screws to screw it in. And it comes with little flat screws. You know how I love putting screws in. So 
So I'm just going to attach it so that it's on the table. Nice and firmly. Right, so this on the fabric guide comes up and it slides. So what I'm going to do is I've marked my line. I've only marked the start of it because that's all I need to set up my guide. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to match that line to my O2 needle notch, my O1 needle notch, sorry, my left needle notch, which is the second one in. So I'm gonna make sure that my needles are high, my knife is high, and I'm going to just put this in with the line going over that O1 needle notch. I'm going to put my foot down and at this stage I'm going to slide my fabric guide up so that it is set. And what I have to do is just feed this fabric in, keeping the raw edges against the fabric guide. And what that's going to do is give me a perfect five eighths of an inch seam. Of course I'm cutting off probably just over three eighths but it will give me a straight seam and I will have cut off the exact right amount so it is really precise and that's such a huge deal um, it's one of the biggest problems I have in class is people worrying they're cutting the right amount off so that is how I set it up that is the advantage of it it doesn't have to be a 5 8 seam here. I have a half inch seam. So get, again, same process. Lift your needles, raise your foot. Make sure your knife is high. Match it up with your needle that you're using. If left needle if you're using both needles. If you're just using the right needle, then just the right needle. But I want my stitches to stitch into this line because that is my seam line. And then I've, I've moved my guide so that it's in the right place. And off I go again. And it just helps to keep everything straight and very accurate. So there you go. And another one's done. So let's go back to the uh, slideshow so that I can show you a bit more with that. Right, so we talked about the fabric guide and I talked about the smaller fabric guide, which absolutely will work, but it's not as good as the big ones. So, so what advantage is this gonna give us in garment making? Well, this is the perfect setup for sewing a garment. Remember, like all seam guides, it will not work on a curve, but it's great on the straight and you'll be able to accurately sew five eighths of an inch seam allowances, which in garment making, many patterns are five eighths. So that's a real help, but you're not limited to that. You, you could set your guide to half inch, quarter inch, three eighths of an inch. So piecing blocks together. So now you can get the perfect seam allowance for making quilts. So you can match it to a quarter of an inch and that quarter of an inch is going to be straight. You have this nice long guide and you have all those feed dogs working for you. So you'll be able to sew super straight seams. And I just want to add, I know some people don't think about piecing on the serger, but remember it has all those feed dogs. So if you're working on a bias edge, it can really help to use the serger with all those feed dogs to help you to prevent the fabric stretching. So definitely great for, for piecing quilting. And I think more than anything, using the fabric guide with ser serger stitches is just going to make sewing projects so much more accurate and easy. You're not going to have to fight guessing how much to cut off. You can get a perfect seam allowance and a totally straight seam. So um, I think that's pretty exciting. I, I'm certainly thrilled to see this attachment. The other thing I haven't mentioned so much is it's giving you a larger workspace too, which can also be very helpful. And there's more. So let's talk about flat lock stitch because flat lock stitch is a stitch that you stitch and you 
get these, you can see those little rungs. And it's really difficult sometimes to keep those all even so they're all the same size. And in addition to that, when you pull on your seam and your fabric slides flat, you can sometimes find that the fabric was a little bit thick and it hasn't actually gone as flat as you'd like it. So for flat lock stitch, we sometimes have to sew off the edge to give thicker fabrics a little more room. So this, this guide is gonna make that super, super easy. So let me take you back onto the machine. So, right, let me change that over. So this is the big one, right. So I'm set up here and um, I'm going to be sewing flat lock stitch and I have the knife up and cutting so it is going to cut and what I want is to have stitches that have these really nice even rungs on them all the same length and you can see that my fabric folded under is really really straight under that seam and the back is fairly flat but I used um, a thicker fabric slightly just so that it was not quite as flat as I'd like. So what I need to do is I need to move this guide so that it is slightly less than my regular stitch. So let me show you. If I put this through so that it's kissing the knife or even being cut by the knife, what will happen is it may not pull flat because it's got interfacing on the back. So what I actually want to do, and I can probably do it better if I take my foot off and show you, what I actually want to do is feed this in so it's a little bit short of the knife so that I've got a little more room to flatten out that seam. And I'm particularly thinking of fabrics like fleece and, and wools where they're just thicker than um, thicker than the machine knows about. In other words, the machine will work really well with cotton, but it doesn't know when you use the thicker fabric. So here we are, I've got this edge lined up. So what I'm doing is I'm feeding it in, it's slightly short of the knife, okay? It's not, the raw edge is not kissing the knife. And what I'm going to do is just stitch with the raw edge against the guide. And what that's going to do is allow my stitch to just fractionally fall off the fabric. If I was using a really thick fabric, I might make it fall off even more. So my stitch has fallen off just a fraction, not so much that you'd really notice, but it has. And then what that allows me to do is pull this totally flat. So totally flat and my stitches are all the same width. I haven't fed it in so they're thick, thin, thick, thin. So pretty cool. Okay, a nice, nice flat seam with a little bit more room. And actually, even when you're using a thin fabric, I, I sometimes think giving it just a little bit more room just helps the stitch to lay flatter. So I was using a two thread flat lock for that stitch in case anybody needed to know two thread flat lock wide. Right, what I'm going to do is go back to the slideshow because I'm going to try and answer a few questions that came up on the posts about this attachment. So yes, you can do more with these um, tables, the overlock table, you can do more. You can add more decorative stitching. Um, so, I mean, there's a consideration. Let me just do this so that it's, whoops, let me go back one. Right, I'm going to just pull that over so that it is. Oh, I'll leave it like that. So what happens is there are more decorative stitches you can do with this table. And I haven't gone into huge details with it, but you can use things like the downturn fella and the hemmers and even the knit woven binder. Now you're gonna to say to me, well, what would you do with that? Well, imagine you were doing a hem on a tunic and 
you were doing a cover stitch, stitching down the hem, you actually are able to put a decorative serger stitch. Now, what is a decorative serger stitch? It's a serger stitch using decorative thread, like a three thread overlock onto the bottom of the hem. OK, and that's going to add some weight, add some decoration, and you will be using or could be using seven or eight threads. So I know a lot of you are looking to use more threads and we will go into more detail with that in time. So for decorative inf for information on decorative um, stitching, I, I feel that there's so much to be said about it that I didn't want to add it into this video. I just wanted to make this one where you understand what, what the uh, accessory does. But Missy Billingsley and I, while we were at Baby Lock Tech, we did a live video and Missy was teaching a class where they were using a lot of these decorative um, techniques. They were using the double hammers, um, the plain hammers, um, various things. And so we did include that in the live that we did. And if you want to go and watch that live, you'll find it in, on both of our public pages in Facebook. Missy's is Missitopia, and you will find it on her page there. And mine is Deb Canham Studio hyphen Surge Sanity, and you will find it there. So I'm not going to add that to this particular video, but it's there for you to see. And I did want to give you the item numbers, the triumph and the ovation only. It's only for the triumph and ovation, and it's the overlock table, BLA hyphen OLT. And the fabric guide that I use that is by far the best of the fabric guides is BLES8 hyphen FG. OK, so those were what I featured, but it's as I said, it works with other attachments that go with cover stitch, such as the downturn fellas, the hammers um, and the knit woven binder. So for those of you who want my written notes because they want to eat it and digest it, and I understand that, you know, everybody learns a different way. Some people like to see it. Some people like to read it. You can find my written notes on this in my Facebook group, Deb Canham Studio Surge Sanity. No, Deb Canham, Stu Deb Canham Surge Sanity Projects. Sorry, I messed that up. Deb Canham Surge Sanity Projects and look under files. And I know it gets confusing because I have a public page and I have a group, but I can't put files on my public page, only in my group. So the written notes for this are going to be in there. And uh, I think I've answered a lot of questions. There's one or two I haven't answered. I have this orange bin that I collect my cut, cuttings with, and that does fit underneath this table. So that was one question. Somebody else asked if they could use it um, with other machines. Remember, it's just the triumph and the ovation. Do I think it's exciting? Yes, I'm super thrilled about it because when I do a class, with luck, if everybody has this attachment, they will all come out the same size, which will be an achievement and make it easier for everyone. So yes, I think it's a super step forward. I think I think we've needed this for years and I'm thrilled we have it. So we can now do accurate seams and more decorative stuff with eight threads and things like that. But I haven't so much covered that as covered the basics of why I'm so excited. <laughs> So anyway, I hope that helps you. Um, I would have done a live on this, but I'm on the outer bands of the hurricane and it's internet's a bit up and down. So this seemed the best option and I will see you all soon. Thank you for watching. Good night.